Today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at our activity 2.1 needing input, and we're gonna be focusing on using a flex sensor. Now in our flex sensor, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about analog and digital inputs. In our previous activities, we've gone ahead and focused on the pressure sensor, which we use as a digital input. Today, we'll be using our flex sensor as an analog input. So attaching any type of input device to your microbit requires the three volts to the power supply. Most input devices do require power to detect a change in the flow of electricity. Most output devices rely on power from the GPIO pins. That power must then go to the ground. So you'll be connecting your input sensors to three volts or ground on your microbit. You'll use two different types of input devices in this unit, digital and analog. These sensors are inputs because they put electricity into the microbit. The way they put electricity into the system is what makes them either digital or analog. Digital sensors can be on or off, and there is no in-between. However, with analog sensors, they can report a range of values and thus often need a conditional statement in the code to use them properly. In our next topics, we are going to be working with these analog sensors. Remember, analog sensors send varying values to the microbit. That value depends on the amount of bend in your flex sensor. It is also important to note to be careful with your flex sensor. To get reliable data, flex the sensor away from the ink as shown below. Bending the sensor close to the base or in the opposite direction may damage your sensor. Do not flex the sensor any more than what is indicated in this animation. Now, just like the pressure sensor, a flex sensor is an external sensor that can be attached to your microbit by using alligator wires. This device can detect a change in resistance by bending the sensor either forward or back. The next step is to go ahead and test your flex sensor by completing the flex sensor project. You can see that with your flex sensor project, we're going to be using an infinite loop called a forever loop, and we're also going to be using multiple conditions with this program. Now, what we want our program to do is basically if the flex sensor is bent in a forwards direction, we want to be able to show an F on the LED screen for forward. Now, the analog value that we're going to be using for this project is if it is greater than 900. Now, you may need to change your value depending on your flex sensor. The second condition we're going to be using is if the flex sensor is bent in a backwards direction. We'll go ahead and show a B on our microbit LED screen for backwards. Now, in order to get the B to appear, we're going to be using our analog value of less than 800. Now, that will leave us with a range between 8 and 900. That is where we'll be using an else statement. So if the flex sensor is left straight or not being bent, we want to show a straight line on our LED screen to represent that range. So let's go ahead and take a look at our make code programming environment and program our flex sensor. For our flex sensor project, what we're looking to do is to use an external sensor such as the flex sensor. And we're going to use those analog values to determine what our output should do. In this case, we're using that flex sensor to simply show an F, a B, or a straight line. The F is going to represent us bending the flex sensor forward, the B backwards, and the straight line is if we are leaving it alone. Now, it's important to note that the emulator will work, but connecting a flex sensor to the micro bit, you will have different values. You will need to use that flex sensor test in order to get the correct values. Now, taking a closer look at our flow chart, we can see that we're going to be using a forever event handler. This is going to allow our program to repeat repetitively and check the conditions of those statements. So we're going to go ahead and start with our forever event handler. And from here, we can see that we have two different conditions we're using. If the flex sensor is being bent forward and if the flex sensor is being bent backwards. So in order to create multiple conditions, it's important to note that we're going to be using an if then as well as an else if. The third part of that condition is that else statement on whether or not either one of those are true. So if neither of those are true, then we would be using our else statement. So we're going to start off by bringing in our logic block and we're going to go ahead and bring in this if then else. Now here we only have one condition and we have two possible outcomes. We're going to need to add that second condition by going ahead and selecting that plus sign. That will go ahead and add that else if statement for us. 
Now with your if and else if statements, you have to remember that the first statement that's being checked is the if part. After the if statement is checked, if it is not true, then it will move on to check the else if. If the else if is not true, then it will run whatever is in your else statement. So for my if statement, we are writing a condition that says if the flex sensor is bent forward. In this case, we should have a value that is greater than. So we're gonna be using that value of 900. So we wanna write a condition that if the flex sensor is greater than 900. Now, just as we did with the pressure sensor, we're gonna go ahead and create a variable so that we can just simply call the variable flex sensor instead of calling a specific pin. This is gonna become more helpful the more inputs or outputs you're using. So we'll go to that variable drawer and we're gonna go ahead and make a new variable and we're just gonna go ahead and call this flex sensor. Once we call our flex sensor, the next thing we need to do is set that flex sensor to read a specific pin. So we're gonna take our set flex sensor to zero and that's gonna be the first thing in that forever loop. Now, once we set that flex sensor to zero, we need to change our zero to read a specific pin. In our flow chart, you can see that our flex sensor is being connected to pin zero. So we are gonna need to go ahead and select which pin we're gonna be reading. We can do that by going under our advanced section, finding our pins. Now remember, with the pressure sensor, we were using that as a digital. So we use this digital read pin. But our flex sensor is an analog sensor, meaning it could have many different values. It's not just on or off. So we're gonna be using an analog read pin for this one. Now with that analog read pin, we wanna make sure that that pin is set to the correct pin in our flow chart, which is zero. We can then go ahead and place that in the zero in our variable. And now anytime we call the flex sensor, it will read whatever the value is on pin zero. Now that we have our variable, we can go ahead and write the logic to the if statement. So because we're using greater than, we're gonna to need to go into that logic drawer and grab a comparison block, and we're gonna flip that less than sign over to greater than. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and put that into our if statement. Our condition reads that if the flex sensor is greater than 900, so we're gonna grab our variable, and now that we've connected the flex sensor to analog read pin zero, that's gonna be the first part of the logic if the flex sensor is greater than 900. Now, if that statement is true, what we want to see is the letter F on your LED screen. So because we're using a letter, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a show string here, and I'm gonna change that word hello to just a capital F for forward. So when that value changes on our pin, we should be able to see the letter F. Now for my second condition, what happens if the flex sensor is bent backwards or less than 800? So we're gonna go ahead and write our condition just as we did above. We'll grab a comparison block. This time we're gonna leave it as less than. We'll go back to our variable drawer and grab the flex sensor again. And we're gonna go ahead and say, if the flex sensor is less than 800. If it is less than 800, we're gonna go ahead and add another show string, and we'll go ahead and change that word hello to the letter B. Now remember, we have a range here of eight to 900. So what happens if that flex sensor is in that eight to 900 range? That's where that else condition comes into play. If neither the if or the else if are true, then the else will take over and we should see a straight line on our LED screen. In order to create a straight line, we're just gonna to go to basic and we'll grab a show LED block. And on that LED block, we're just gonna go ahead and make a straight line right across the middle. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and test to see if our sensor is working correctly. You will notice that on pin zero on the emulator, we have this little white zero. Now with the pressure sensor, we were able to adjust that from either zero to one. But when you're using an analog value, if you click on this, you're gonna notice as you drag it up, those numbers are gonna range from zero all the way up to 1023. So we can check to see if our sensor is doing the correct performance. Remember, if the flex sensor is greater than 900, we should see an F. And right now we can take that and if we drop that down, we should see that it should stay an F until we get right below that 900. So the second we get below 900, we're now in that eight to 900 range, we have that straight line. 
And if we go ahead and drop it down a little bit more below 800, you should see that be on your LED screen. So just a way for you to kind of test and use a different type of sensor with your microbit. Now, how would you actually find the real values if you were using this on the microbit itself? This is where we need to create that button A press to test what that real time value is. So we're gonna go ahead and just grab an input and we're gonna use an on A button press so that we can check this whenever we want. And what we wanna do is show that number. So we're gonna bring in our show number zero and instead of showing the number zero, we wanna show what that flex sensor is. Now, as I mentioned before, I always like to go ahead and throw in a little pause block here gives us a little bit of time before it starts reading that sensor again. So now you can see that my value of my flex sensor is set to 286. And when we have this connected to the microbit, if I want to see what that value is, I should be able to go ahead and hit that A button and it will run that 286 across the screen. So no matter what the value is in real time, we have the ability to hit the A on our microbit and it will give us what that value is. So now that you understand how to program an analog sensor, go ahead and give it a try.